Hello and welcome to Forever Motorsports for our review of the Dutch Grand Prix qualifying and what a qualifying session it was. Certainly it went down to the wire with I think two uh, red flags there at the end. Uh, quality 1 and Quality 2 were actually really really quite neat and tidy com uh, compared to that Quality 3 session where we lost Logan Sargent as well as Collis, uh, not Collis Science, gosh I'm tripping over my drivers <laughs> here, uh, as well as Charles Leclerc we lost in that final qualifying qualifying session unfortunately but nonetheless qualifying one and qualifying two were certainly very exciting qualifying one we started with the wet session and qualifying two it started to dry out and then quality three we got full dry conditions but to start with qualifying one who were those drivers that we lost in that session mark yeah so of course debutant liam lawson was useless um, yeah, shame. Shame. That's horrible. First time ever in the Formula 1 car being called upon, of course, due to Ricardo's broken hand yesterday. He only managed to finish in last place and quite a bit slower, almost a whole second and a half uh, off of the next car, which was Valtteri Bottas with a 122.26. That was Bottas. Magnussen, Ocon and Joe were the other drivers that we lost in Q1 there. So, yeah, normal drivers with experience to, to lose though. there. As I said before the session, it would be expected for... Uh, I want to say Logan Sargent, for Liam Lawson not to finish uh, too well in the qualifying session because, of course, he's only had a single practice session in that car. He is still a rookie. He hasn't had the plethora of experience that everyone else has had uh, in the rest of the field. But the rest of those drivers that we lost, of course, Liam Lawson down in 20th, Bartas 19th, Magnussen 18th, 17th was Esteban Ocon, and then our last driver that we lost from that session was Joe Guan Yu. Yes, and then we moved on into Q2. And Q2 was very interesting. We literally said right before, we said we're going to lose a major name. Who are we going to lose? And that major name was Lewis Hamilton out in Q2. Really not great performance from him at all. So let's just go over those five drivers that we did lose. Nico Hulkenberg, Yuki Tsunoda, Lewis Hamilton in 13th. Gasly in 12th and Stroll in 11th. Also not great from Stroll. He should have been up into the top 10 there, especially when you consider his teammate Alonso. But um, very competitive up to that point. And Albon... Um, did very well and topped uh, Q2. I have been so impressed with Alex Albon this season. He has been just the absolute form of the field. He's no Williams. And I'm just going to spo spoil what happened in Q3. He's put his car on people. I mean, yeah. what is going on? Exactly that. So let's go and talk about Q3. So Q1 oh, and Q2. We Q2 already. Well, I mean, yes. Q2, there wasn't much to talk about other than the fact that it was very competitive between everybody. And anybody well, could have could have vied for positions there. It was right up to, down to the wire there. And the drivers that we did end up losing in Q2 was Hulkenberg in 15th. Uh, as we've said already, Snow to 14th, Hamilton 13th. The big name that we did lose in that session. 12th was Gazzi and Stroll in 11th. Indeed. So we moved to Q3, which we had our top 10. Now, Logan Sargent did brilliantly to get into Q3. And we are so appreciative of, how his, of his efforts. And uh, Logan Sargent... Uh, Alex Albon, I think it was Sainz and um, possibly Russell, Russell think, yes. Yes, were the four cars that came out and, and were uh, able to put in laps before the red flag yeah. caused by yeah. Logan Sargent. Unfortunately, he did just, he, he came out on a set of softs, put in a brilliant lap, put himself up into provisional second place. Uh, and then on his warm down lap, lost it and crashed into the wall, caused about a 15 minute break uh, with a red flag. And then, yeah, we, we went for another few minutes and then we lost yeah, Charles Leclerc. Minutes. We had three minutes of driving after that for waiting ages and then Charles Leclerc decided to go and put himself into the wall and a very, very odd one at that slight bit of understeer and the car just refused to come back. I don't know why yeah, he slam on he, brakes he or something. He completely was not able to keep the car on the track in, I think it was about turn eight. A very, very weird situation there where the car just did not want to turn in and he went onto the grass and he was a passenger into the wall looked like a bit of a high energy impact there hopefully he's all right but unfortunately we lost another ferrari yeah so that was logan Sargent in 10th leclerc in ninth of course both of them causing red flags we then had a race right to the end there because of course it got much drier we saw much quicker times uh, um, being a possibility right near the end so pretty much everybody had one attempt to put themselves where they will start tomorrow in the grand prix we saw piastri finish in eighth position and lucky he was close to getting right near the top there but uh, he was one of the first drivers to cross that line and each person that went over after was a little bit quicker. So exactly. go over the top eight there, Reese, for us. So, of course, we said Piastri finished there in eighth position. Sergio Perez not having another great qualifying session. Ugh, 
the, it's not going to go down well for Perez. Uh, Carlos Sainz in that Zerza Ferrari, he did not crash out, but he put himself up into P6, not where we'd expect the Ferraris to be this race weekend, but we'll see what they have in terms of race pace tomorrow. Alonso not doing too badly, putting himself up into fifth position, uh, definitely out qualifying his teammate Lance Stroll, who only sets himself into 11th. Albon, spectacular. I am really rooting for Albon. I hope he gets another race seat. Don't go to Ferrari. Do not go to Ferrari. Uh, and then we have George Russell in the uh, in the Mercedes up in P3. Lando Norris on that front row next to Max Verstappen in P1. Yeah, indeed. And I think what was also great to see, and you made mention to us, the fact we've got six different constructors in the top six. So we've got a Red Bull, a McLaren, a Mercedes, a Williams, an Aston Martin, and a Ferrari before we should start repeating teams. So that was brilliant to see. Really, really was brilliant to see. Uh, so it's going to gear up towards a very exciting race tomorrow in Zandvoort, where Max Verstappen can, of course, equal that win record with um, Sebastian Vettel. Yes, and do be sure to join us for the race tomorrow, where I think we could get a few upsets, not only from some competitive cars down the field, but also from the weather. It's still a bit of an unknown as to what the weather will be doing tomorrow afternoon. There's lots of predictions for rain. There could be some interchanging conditions going from rain to, to dry, but it should all still be to play for tomorrow. And if it isn't, Max Verstappen could also equal Sebastian Vettel's nine race win streak record. Very exciting. Please do be sure to watch us uh, on our streams tomorrow on the Forever Motorsports channel. We do look forward to having you alongside with us. But that has been it for myself and Mark for this Dutch Grand Prix qualifying review. Thank you very much for joining us. Cheers.